We are in a post-Matilda world here, people, and quite frankly, I don't know what's going to top the magic of last week's film. And there's the bell for round three. The kangaroo is across the ring. Pure cinema. They should have just stopped making movies after that. But in case of an emergency, it's always best to call in a professional like the Thunder Warrior. Yes, thank you, Thunder. This is the perfect opportunity to finish out the Thunder Warrior trilogy. Don't remember what happened in the previous Thunder Warrior movies? Don't worry, it never matters. They just make up shit as they go along anyway. The first one was about a Native American named Thunder, who was angry the construction workers and the law were tearing up his family's land, so he fought back Rambo-style and destroyed the town with a bulldozer. All was well in the sequel, however, when he joined the same police force that tried to kill him, and then they tried to kill him again. But while we had bad Sheriff Bo Svensson in the first, we got good Sheriff Bo Svensson in the second, till it ended with him shooting at Thunder out of nowhere. We don't have Bo in this one, but the Sheriff here is John Philip Law. Could he be playing the same character? I don't know, the character's name is different. Then again, Bo Svensson's name changed from Sheriff Bill in the first to Sheriff Roger in the second, so sure, Sheriff Jeff here could be the same. This is how you know he's different. It's not the same picture of the sheriff on both posters. It's not even the sheriff on this one. Though the cover from 3 uses the image of Mark Gregory from the first, and the cover was used as the inspiration for the Ghana poster of the Road Warrior, and <laughs> you thought it was a Rambo knockoff. Yes, Mark Gregory does return in the title role here, and people have returned behind the scenes too. We've still got director Fabrizio De Angelis under the pseudonym Larry Ludman, and co-writer Dardano Sacchetti as David Parker Jr. Plus, Francesco Damasi did music on the first one, and Sergio Diofizi shot the second. Oh, sorry, I mean Frederick Hale. Once again, I am sure Thunder is going to take on another racist militia. I love the quality of a movie where it's a nice sunny day out, but still looks so grainy it might as well be storming. This is the opening, by the way. Hmm, this is everyone we have, huh? Great, Thunder will kill us in seconds. I see Mr. Bowie insists on holding his weapon as if it was a shovel. Yes, thank you, Arnt Lee Ermey. I'm guessing these are the villains? You all know how I see things. That's why those yellow asses at the Pentagon relieved me of my command. I don't know what's happening, but why hasn't this helicopter blown up yet? Sir, we can't hear you. You mind turning off the helicopter? It's slowing down in one shot, but still going fast in the other. Of course, this guy's name is Colonel Magnum, appropriately played by Werner Pochaff. He was in a movie called Magnum Cop and a ton of other movies that sound like they'd be a great double feature with Thunder Warrior 3, like Striker, Born to Fight, Cop Game, A Man Called Rage. And more than one of those were directed by Bruno Mattei. You know there's gonna be law-breaking when we got John Philip Law in the cast. Even the crew has names ready for action, like Johnny Major. Unfortunately, if C.W. McCall ain't singing about it, then I'm not taking this convoy seriously. You can't drink and drive, that's illegal. Woohoohoo, do we look racist enough, Colonel? Sure, this was made simultaneously with the second one, but Thunder has a son now? He's teaching the boy to hunt his food or something. Now. No son of mine misses the helicopter. And we ain't gonna get any work done if you keep stopping to eat barbecue every five minutes. They look like they showed up years too late for the zombie hunters scene from Dawn of the Dead. Woo, come on boys, next stop chicken fried steak territory. Thunder senses the usual danger. Whoa, it's getting awfully racist around here. At this point, Thunder just has to be annoyed. Great. Another day of people randomly showing up and shooting at us. Do I even want to know the context? 
After they kill the horses, Thunder will attack, and they have the reaction you think they would. What the hell? Yes, this definitely calls for a what the hell? That's one step closer to what in tarnation? I suppose they've finished their plan, just drive around and act like idiots, and if you see a child, shoot at him! Thunder is knocked out, he won't know it's us. Get that varmint, he has a much nicer trailer than we do. You come out, or I'll get pissed off! You won't like him when he's pissed off, he'll put holes in your trailer and spill your beer everywhere. Let me guess, even though they're killing Thunder's people, if there was a fourth Thunder Warrior movie, it'd be about Thunder joining them and then being surprised when they turn on him. Unfortunately, we're still in the first act. Thunder can't kill them yet, he has to get his ass handed to him first, and then he can get his revenge. Honestly though, in this universe, he should have known not to make everything around him so explosive. We got him now, boys, and I know our beer cans are empty, but if we drink the air, we can still get a little drunk. They tell him to stay on his reservation. <laughs> what? That's where he was! Then you blew it up! This racist militia doesn't make any sense. And when we come back, more shots of birds. Mind joining me outside? Definitely a Sharknado. People are gonna die. Let's go watch a movie. We kinda wanna see a shark now, literally through the window. Everyone knows sharks don't like Vegemite. It's pretty damn impressive and fun to watch. <laughs> This film took the world by storm. Won't you join us? <laughs> if you're wondering where his wife is, she's still here. Though this character has been played by different actresses in all movies, is this another case where it could be the same character? Ugh, help me out. Oh, whatever your name is, point me to the nearest bulldozer. But if you can't get Bo Svensson back, casting John Philip Law in the sheriff role does make all the sense in the world. So what you maintain is that a group of friends of mine spontaneously attacked your village for no reason whatsoever. Um, yes. Have you not been paying attention to this trilogy? And just because he's going to Sheriff Jeff for help doesn't mean this isn't the same character who took a shot at him at the end of the second. The Sheriff tells him he needs to bring more evidence that the militia attacked him. Great, the rest of the movie will be Thunder collecting beer cans. He at least wants them to pay for the damages. The amount is $56,000. That's a very specific number. You already had this amount in your head, didn't you? The sheriff finds them fast. Of course they're at the bar, and they ain't happy. Now wait a minute. Bob Keller's an honest man. He pays his taxes. It's the banjo music in the background that lets you know they're serious. Go figure, they don't want to pay the $56,000. Christ, Jeff, whose side do you want? The law. I mean, it is my name. He can't help Thunder, though, who sneaks up on him with his power of cinematography. Thunder lets him know he'll get all the revenge himself. He just has to follow the music. That goofy-ass music has been in this movie more than Thunder has. Just because Bo Svensson isn't in this doesn't mean someone can't be walking tall. Thank you for letting me borrow your big stick, Bo. He knows where to get this guy where it hurts. I beg you! Not the car! Hey, he's going easy on you. He isn't blowing it up or running it over with a bulldozer. Not my car! I'd rather you take my children, but not my car! I love the turn this series has taken. Thunder has harnessed the power of a mob enforcer and Michael Douglas from falling down. He tears up this guy's entire store while saying, you have 24 hours to get me my money. But while he lets this dude off easy, this other guy, hell no, I'm burning your store, bitch. Well, shit, I guess we gotta do something now, deputies. Thunder, you son of a bitch, I mean, you're pushing me too hard, damn it. He nearly burned down the whole town. Um, no he didn't. I've seen him burn down a whole town. This is nothing. At this point in the story, he's still walking in the desert. Also, no one asked for a kid's sidekick. Things are not the same as they were before, little crow. Er, uh, well, I guess I could use your help. We are making jokes about the movie here, and your name is Crow. 
I love when they radio into the helicopter to ask to keep a lookout for thunder, because in these movies, there's always just a random helicopter in the sky. Anyway, I found him, fellas. Get over here quick. You'll probably jump off a ledge into the water or something. This one is a pretty simple story, and far, far, far less complicated than the second one, because it really isn't trying to tie into the first. If anything, this comes across as a better second film, because you could just assume that after faking his own death in the first, this is just another corrupt sheriff's department he found. Somewhere along the way, he picked up the habit of destroying cars. He kills a lot more cars in this one than people or buildings. Dang it, now we have to walk back and we don't have any empty beer cans to pretend to drink out of. We just have small talk. I promise to take my wife to the movie. Don't think I'll make it. And I was gonna take her to Rambo 3 and shoot to kill. Those are out this year and could give us pointers. There's so many bad things going on here. Let's not worry about the windowless van. Just send him on his way. They're at a gas station. Gas stations in these movies have the shortest lifespan. Watch what he does after he fills up. Was that really necessary? Dang it, Sheriff, we're lost. You know we ain't much for walking. Still another 18 miles. Save your breath back. We lost half our men at mile two. 18 miles is gonna kill all of us. While Matilda had the McDonald's commercials, this one wants to put you in a brand new car. Original chrome, air conditioned, leather upholster. Yeah, but I'm looking for a car, a car, a fast car. You want it to explode, don't you? Oh, shit, you're not kidding. What? Complete the forehead and all. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I'll take three. I honestly forget if these people have anything to do with the militia, or if Thunder is so used to destroying towns, he just goes after anything, plus sending notes to people. <laughs> huh? Could you not mow so early in the morning? It's my day off? I love the way this is shot, too. Like they actually blew up a car lot and stood across the street to secretly film the firemen taking care of it. I'm also wondering if when this cop took off down the road, if he did almost hit that guy. This here's a war zone. It was hell. It was a living hell. I never seen anything like it. Not even Vietnam. Oh yeah, if this is like Vietnam, where are all the loudspeakers playing nothing but CCR and Jimi Hendrix? They are finally willing to pay some money, despite their feelings being hurt. Ten cars destroyed. That bastard. Ah, oh, pipe down, Earl. You ain't fit in a car in ten years. Oh, did you think they were gonna pay Thunder? No, they're gonna pay Colonel Magnum to kill him. Whoever wins, we won't be able to tell. Turn the lights on. For all I know, Matilda is getting jumped again. Um, thanks. You could have just turned on a flashlight. But sure, setting the building on fire works. Or just waiting for the sun to come up. And then once again, they're gonna do some fucked up shit to his wife. Hell, even Thunder seems burnt out by all this. They got Sheena! Who? Ugh, oh, god damn it. I'm really tired. Here's some gasoline and a box of matches. You go blow them up. Now we got our bait set up. It, god damn it, Bob. I told you not to wear the cut off jean shorts. We're trying to be intimidating here. They are in for a surprise. Oh, shit! It's not possible. I thought he'd come on his own. Whoa, what? More than one? We're getting the hell out of here. Thank God Thunder and his men are there to save her. <laughs> you know, using a knife would have been a lot safer. Come on, men, we'll get that truck. Remember, shoot the tires. That'll make them blow up. Wait, damn it, the tires are buried. Shoot it in the bumper. It'll have the same effect. Whoa, they're surrendering peacefully? That's no fun. When we come back, we'll rig them with explosives. Never worry, never sweat, Cozy Cow. He's a guy you won't forget, Cozy Cow. If other dealers you have come, here's a dealer you can trust. All you have to do is just Cozy Cow. We are back, and while they might not be rigged with explosives... He strapped a silly, out-of-place kids movie soundtrack on them. I'm still waiting for the sheriff to turn evil somehow. Our people were living in peace. Then one night, our mighty Indian nation unearthed the war hatchet. Oh yeah? So what else? I'm 
mean, what else do you need? I strapped the bad guys to the hood of a truck. He still wants that $56,000, though, which now it's up to the sheriff to get. This is ruining happy hour. Hey, what's the matter, Bob? You look terrible. So would you if you knew what the sheriff just told me. He said no more paste picante salsa for the chips on account of the new deputy being from New York City. Bad timing. It's high time for their afternoon snack. Pass the ketchup. We need our bellies full of meat when we go people hunting. This is moving fast. In the next cut, they're all surrounding his shack, which they knew he was in. Thunder better get the hell out of there. Damn, they shot the shack in its tires too. But this town has a secret weapon. Please be generous when you're leaving and contribute as much as you can to the contribution plate. A Ron Ormond film. Hoo-hoo, this is gonna get very bloody. Now open your hymnals to the only hymn we know. Amen. Great, much like at the bar, they're all drunk singing too. Well, that was a pointless scene. Now let's fill up on our Jesus steaks and pie. Tragedy is about to strike when Thunder replaces the condiments with fat-free mayo, plus... That's such a nice day. Oh, what the hell? Oh, that's just Fred. You know he gets gassy after church. I don't think there's going to be a bulldozer in this climax, but we still got a motorcycle chase where really the villains just crash into things on their own, regardless of Thunder chasing them. Plus, he got 50 points for that jump. Jesus, this movie does not care about collateral damage. Let's hope that driver was secretly a villain before he was burnt to a crisp. Thunder's plan is a success. Let them crash into the building themselves, and then he'll take care of them. It was very nice of the bad guy to hide out in a coffin himself. He's just gonna end up there anyway. Stay calm. <laughs> Whoa, 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 not in my pork belly! Again, I'm waiting for the sheriff to turn evil. Hell, I kinda want him to. This one's a little anticlimactic. He tells Thunder to leave to rebuild his village, then Thunder does leave, and they have their money to rebuild. Goodbye, little crow. Oh, what? Why is he leaving? Is is Crow not his son? Um, you can stay. Seriously, we're screwed if the militia comes back. And then Thunder is off to finally live in peace, I assume. This is the end of the trilogy. Like I said, it does make more sense than the second one, although I still want to know what happened here. Did Bo Svensson kill one of them? Did Thunder get his revenge on Bo? It's like there's a missing movie between parts two and three. No matter, this is still a very, very entertaining series, which makes absolutely zero sense as a trilogy. But you do get your money's worth, which is coming to watch Mark Gregory blow up shit real good. While his most famous character is Trash from the Bronx Warriors movies, which definitely gave him cult status, the Thunder Warrior movies are also a great way to remember Mark Gregory's mark on action exploitation cinema. After his final movie was released in 1989, fans did spend a lot of years wondering whatever became of Gregory, who was born in Rome, with his real name being Marco de Gregorio. Tragically, though, he passed away in January of 2013 at the age of 48, and it is a very sad story. But his legend and memory will still live on, as not everyone can become an action hero at the age of 17, and then over the course of just a handful of years, give us a collection of near-perfect forms of unapologetically over-the-top, wall-to-wall, blowing-up shit action entertainment. Here's to you, Marco. Respect. And next week, I'm sure I'll find something action-related. But get yourself caught up on the other Thunder Warrior episodes if you haven't gotten the chance. And make sure you got a banjo and some barbecue handy and invite the neighbors. How dare you? Excuse us, ma'am. Uh, have you seen a little Indian boy?